In a previous video, I showed how to extend the thread class to create a secondary thread for your Java application. There's another approach, creating a custom class that implements an interface called Runnable. I'll demonstrate this using the project Implement Runnable, which has a main class and a custom class that extends the thread class. When you implement the Runnable interface, it will have the same run method as when you extend the thread class as a superclass. I'll go to my package, right click and create a new class. I'll call it my runnable. And then, instead of setting a superclass, I'll add an interface. I'll click the add button, type runnable, and choose the runnable interface from java.lang. And then I'll click finish. Eclipse automatically adds the run method because it's a required method of the runnable interface and so it must be implemented by the class. I'll go back to my custom class and I'll copy the code from its run method, selecting everything inside the method signature, copying it to the clipboard, and then I'll come back to the new class that implements runnable and paste that code in. And to distinguish it from the first class, I'll change the timing. Instead of two seconds, I'll have this one output something to the console every 1.5 seconds. Notice that when you implement the runnable interface, you no longer have direct access to the methods of the thread class. So to call sleep, I'll need to add the thread class as a prefix. I'll also change the output to the console. I'll expand my editor and I'll change the output to from runnable. I'll save those changes and come back to my main class. Just as with a class that extends thread, to execute a runnable, you have to create an instance of the class. So here, after I've created the object, I'll create the new runnable object. I'll set the data type as my runnable. I'll set the name as runnable. And I'll instantiate it from calling the automatically generated no arguments constructor. The next step is to start the thread. You can't start the thread directly by calling a start method, and that's one of the downsides of using the runnable interface. Instead, you create a new instance of the thread class, like this. New thread, then pass in the runnable object, and then from there, call the start method. So the new thread is anonymous. You're not assigning it a name. You only need to instantiate it and use it long enough to call the start method, and then you're done with it. So now I'll have three processes going on. The main process, which has its own for loop, the my thread process, and the my runnable process. I'll switch back to the main class and run the application, and I see all of the threads running simultaneously. Just as before, when both the main process and all of the other threads are complete, the application terminates automatically. So that's a look at how to use the runnable interface. You implement the interface instead of extending the thread class. This results in a slightly more lightweight class that only does the things you need instead of all the things that the thread class does. But as you can see, it lets you define and execute secondary processes just as easily as extending the thread class.